But there'll be plenty of beer. Hey, everybody, how you doing? And Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, <laughs> See, there, I'm a liberal. I'm a liberal, and I just said Merry Christmas. You know, one of the things you hear on a lot of these right-wing talk stations like WMAL is that somehow liberals don't like Christmas. I mean, they may not like Christmas just because it's a bunch of capitalist crap. You know, but it has nothing to do with the religion. <laughs> you know, the big jams at the post office and the jams in the stores and people battling each other. And the, you know, some lady whips out her bag and smacks me at Target trying to get her to some stupid product that's on sale. I mean, that's why we may not like Christmas. But it's really, you know, hey, I really wish it was more of a religious Christmas in many respects, even though I don't consider myself a particularly religious person. Although I am kind of spiritual, you know, distinction there. Uh, but anyhow, um, hey, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and this is these are the Christmas tunes here on uh, WNEW ninety nine one WNEW. So the problem is, of course, the signal. This is a cheap. This is a cheap radio, and you see that when I it's it, it's. If you turn the radio and you get you get MZQ over there, you know, <laughs> over there on 98.7. So, you know, the one problem that CBS is going to have with that new all newser is, you know, it ain't the greatest signal, okay? And this this station will flip over to all news in mid-January. But see that? Yeah. Whoa. So, you know, w WTOP will continue to have the signal, the great signal. It'll be interesting to see if uh, CB, how, what, what, kind of, what can CBS do with it? I, mean, I honestly, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if CBS, once they get a little traction going with WNEW, I wouldn't be surprised to see them flip that all newser to another signal. I wouldn't be surprised. Let's see. I wouldn't be surprised to see CBS put that signal on 94.7. I'm sure that's, you know, it's an inside the beltway, but that's the base signal. I wouldn't be surprised somehow in 2012 to see CBS put their new all newser on 94.7. Or, or take a WJFK and bounce that over to 94.7 and put the new WNEW, keep it on 991, but put it on 106.7. Now that would be a good signal. If you had 99, if you had uh, WNEW on 99.1, which is over there in kind of northeastern Prince George's County and, and western Anne Arundel County, that would cover Baltimore Metro, that would cover the northeastern part of the D.C. Metro, that would cover part of the eastern shore, and then you had 106.7, which would cover northern Virginia and D.C., and a good swath of Virginia. That combination of 99.1 and 106.7 would give the new WNEW a killer signal. That's something they're not going to have when they launch the station on 99.1, and it could hurt them. You know, people, in order to get really good ratings, especially with the PPMs, you need to have a killer signal on a clock radio. And this is this is a typical cheap clock radio, although it doesn't have a clock on it. The fact that I can move this thing around here and I can get MZQ coming in and Hot 99.5 uh, coming in on adjacent channels in Northern Virginia, I, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't think I'm going to get Elzal on this. Let's see if I can get 107.9. It's going to be that of an hour report. Okay, I get T.O.P. on 107.7. Oh, there they are. Not great, but I can get them. Eh, you know, it's going to hurt Elzal's ratings a little bit, too, by having them on 107.9. Okay, folks, so anyhow, this is what we got going there. Um, Washington Post, Marcus Broccoli, the uh, head guy with the Washington Post, apparently having a big meeting there with his posties about, uh, you know, boosting their morale. Apparently it's been a tough year for the Post. They've lost a lot of subscribers. The website, yeah, it's kind of slow to load. You know, a lot of people are slamming the Post. You know, you look at the Post. Look at this. I mean, even just look at today's style section. 
Look at how much of the front page of the style section is taken up with a, this movie review that's literally three paragraphs of the movie review literally takes up almost all of the front page of the style section. It's telling you we don't have enough news to fill up our paper. You know, we're a major newspaper in the United States and we can't even fill up, you know, a, a lame little eight section style section, you know, 10 section. You know, despite all the filler in here, the TV column, you know, and movie paid listings, I mean, it just shows you that this paper is not doing well. And, uh, you know, I don't know. They really need to bolster, you know, they, they need to bolster this paper. It's, it's, it's going down the tubes pretty quickly. It's still a good paper, but it's not a great paper like it used to be. It just isn't. You know, it's, they make a lot of dumb mistakes and they make a lot of stupid things, especially that style section. Okay, folks, we got the, uh, speaking of WNEW, I should have brought that up before. New logo for the station right there, WNEW. See that? There's that CBSI kind of behind it there. So this is the new logo for the station. I like the black and white. I think I think that's really cool. Black and white. You know, I, I if, if I was designing their website, I'd just keep it all black and white. I, I kind of like that. But anyway. <laughs> Here's DCR TV today. This is the greatest website ever. Look at that. Jen Royal is leaving 105.7. Yeah. I don't know. I like Jen. She's a nice person. I've, I've done some interviews with her several times, and I personally like her. But I think that her lawsuit against uh, WNST was kind of dumb. You know, if you're... I tell media people over and over and over again that don't look at criticism, don't look at media commentary about yourself as positive or negative, okay? Let them slam you. It's all good. As long as they're talking about you, that means they're paying attention to you. That's all that matters in the media business. Are they paying attention to me? Am I being ignored? If you're not, if they're talking about you, fine. You know, and, and if you're in the media business, you're going to get a lot of criticism. People criticize me. You know, they, they, some guy said, why do you do all those videos with your crotch? <laughs> well, I'd have the camera at a low angle and I'm holding up boards with the ratings on them, okay? Jeez. Come on, man. Uh. Jerry Hoyt is out over at CBS Radio. He used to program that HFS uh, stream, all rock stream there on 94.7's HD2. And then he did uh, program that Talker 1580. I don't know. Nobody listens to it. So, But anyhow, he's gone. Um, also, we hear that a couple of uh, CCDCs are gone. The uh, Clear Channel DC, a couple of their ad reps are gone. So, uh, you know, but that's... You know, honestly, ad reps come and go. Maybe they're going over to WNEW. It'd be interesting to see that. Um, new design for uh, Channel 4's website, NBCWashington.com. Um, and, oh, interesting in the radio ratings yesterday, uh, WTOP fell to third place. I mean, it's one thing to see Wash take over first place this time of the year because of their Christmas music, but to also see Hot 99.5 beat TOP. Be interesting. Now that we see WNEW coming on the air, you know, I don't think WNEW will go right to the top of the ratings, but they're going to take enough all-news listeners away from T.O.P., so the T.O.P. may not be number one, you know, after this Christmas period's over. It'd be a, when Normally, when the Christmas period's over and Wash goes back to third or fourth place and T.O.P. surges back to the top. So anyhow, we shall see. But it'd be interesting. It's going to be a very interesting year here in the Washington market, radio-wise. Yeah, man. Um, I'd like to uh, tip of the uh, tip of the old ca combat camo cap there to WBAL yesterday. WBAL Radio, I think they did a really nice job uh, doing some uh, retrospectives of uh, the great Ron Smith. Uh, Ron passed away late Monday night. Uh, you know, he had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer only, only two months ago. Um, and I, as I said, while I didn't agree with Ron, he was kind of a conservative. Politically, I didn't agree with him on a lot of issues. I really thought he was one of the best, one of the best um, radio guys. He, he was he was respectful. He was clear. He was logical. You know, he didn't scream and shout. He didn't call people names. He didn't get all blustery and, and self-important, you know, like that certain other guy on WMAL. Um and he was a class act. And uh, it's a shame that there aren't more, you know, more people like him on the anywhere in the uh, in the radio, talk radio business, because Ron was Ron was one of the best. 
and he had a legendary career in the Baltimore market, first being an anchor at Channel 11, WBAL, and moving on about 20-some years ago over to the radio side. And uh, really sad news there. Um, our heart goes out to Ron's family and to all of his colleagues and friends because he was a great guy. All right, folks, uh, that's Dave TV for today. Merry Christmas to you all. Happy New Year. We'll be back with some year-end stuff. We're going to do some year-end reviews. So, uh, you know, we'll, you know that'll be some fun next week. And uh, there's Lil's all. Let's see. Can I... Well, anyhow, what the hell. <laughs> I'm, it's going to take me a while to find the old, the new WNEW on there, anyhow, with all that. Kind of somewhere in between that 99.5 and uh, MZQ. I don't know. All right, folks. Thanks for thanks for watching. Hit the 11 minute mark. So, oh wait, uh, that, this is Dave TV for the 21st of December, the technically shortest day of the year north of the equator. Now, if you're not in Australia, this is the longest day of the year. To all our friends in Australia, uh, put another one on the Bobby. Have a good one, and so there.